Greetings and salutations. Um, back down the shed again. I, I'm currently working on my Wreck-It Ralph uh, costume for uh, do some charity work with Persai costumers, and I'm going to the stage with the overalls that I need the buckle. Now, I could just bought a buckle, but none of them look like the one in the source material, which is very squarish buckle. I mean, it might be up to order online. I don't know. So. I decided to make my own using some of this. It is three mil aluminium, so five centimeters, fifty mil. It's only a meter's worth. And I'm gonna chop off the end, a bit of end of this and cut it all out, drill it out. Into my hands, I've been sketching it all up. So I'm gonna start drawing all that out in a tick. But I thought I'd give an update on the uh, mechless. So I've got a grey one here, I've given it a coat of this uh, urethane gloss I bought. It was only like $10. Not the shiniest of coats, but it shined up a bit. The problem is, of course, it's... N I've given it a couple of coats. I think I went a little bit too heavy-handed on one of them. And it's kind of got that classic spray can pitting going on. But I'm going to give that a test soon to see if it works with the graphite. And that's just the fiddly bits. So if it, if it turns out, it turns out. Now the problem was, I'm going to use my hands for this one because I'm going to have to rub it back. This was the one I airbrushed and I covered it in the clear gloss. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a chemical reaction. This is why you test these things. Uh, now I could have probably just not bothered with the gloss coat, I could have gone straight to graphite, but I wanted to give it a test anyway. And I wasn't overly happy with the shine of that paint, so yeah, it's one of those weird things where the first spray coat worked fine, I left it overnight, I came to, came to do the second coat, and it just went to hell. So that's, again, that's one of those tricky things. Uh, I might try a bit of acetone to clean this up because it's quite a lot of it. And, or, you know, maybe some mess and terps or something. Um, if a push comes to shove, I just sand it back down. But that is a bit of a bugger. Of course, you've got to remember, I also still have this one. I've still got to fix this one up. That one's not too bad. That, sh that should just be another sand and paint. Still got one more neck with a mic, hit it with a bit of clear coat, but honestly, I'm tempted to just use a different paint. So, my first task today is I'm going to put the design on here. It has to hold the belt that comes over the shoulder. And traditionally you just you click into like this little button. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make it so that this aluminium piece is just permanently attached to this button with a bit of a clearance around the, the hole just so it can only swing and maneuver. And the actual strap itself, which I've already done, is Velcro so I can actually adjust it. There's no visual way to adjust the belt on the character model. There's no buckles or anything like that. It's just a thing, which makes sense from a, this is a cartoon character's point of view, but for an actual practical costume, you kind of need to adjust those things occasionally. So yeah, I'm gonna be putting all that on there. Once I've done that, I'm gonna start uh, drilling, that's where I cut it out. I'm probably gonna use a Dremel with a cutting disc. Now I've not used this with aluminium before. I've used it on some small bits of steel and like some brackety kind of stuff but never with aluminium so I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to cut. It it should cut fine but you never know. And I've got plenty of this stuff to f fuck around with. So once I've got this cut out I'm going to draw out all these holes. I'm adding holes to hollow out the inside of this part primarily because I need to fit the design and also I need to be able to put the belt through. So you drill out the holes and then you can, you know, if you've got different cutting techniques, you can you know, use cutters and stuff like that, or saws, the band saws, what have you. And then once I go in, I once all that's done, I go in with the files. And um, what I'm planning on doing is I'm actually going to curve the edges, which should also help it, you know, not catch on anything. It'll make it a lot safer. Plus, also I 
I'm not going to be necessarily that clean with this one. It's supposed to be a bit hobo-ish. It's supposed to be scratched up. So I'm probably not going to be too bothered in trying to file away too many of those imperfections. It, yeah, it's probably lazy on my part, but you know what? It kind of works. And once it's done, you know, it should be a nice solid piece. That's the other thing. I was going to use um, PC foam board or maybe a bit of wood. And frankly, there's going to be rubbing and stuff like that. So I really was trying to avoid using paint because even with like, these graphite and stuff like that, paint rubs. A bit of aluminium will always look like metal no matter how damaged it gets. And if it does bend, then I can just either make a new one or I can beat it back into shape with a little bit of hair or something like that. I'm making the wall about four mil thick. It should be enough to take the weight. No guarantees, but again, I'm not, I don't particularly want to use steel because that's aggravating, and especially if I'm going to have to file it. But, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> my Spidey Sony is on there. Uh, but I need to make these walls a bit thicker. I need to make these walls a bit thicker, but on to the show. should be fairly simple is just not working so I do have a metal cutting this is definitely the metal one it says metal because half it's of course ground off from use and that was just taking forever to cut so I thought oh, I'll use the bandsaw well I've cut like 10 20 mil thick stuff on this stuff before but it's probably because the bandsaw is just getting dull and aged and... Oh yeah. So I started cutting out the buckle that I scribed up. And I don't know if you can figure out what I did wrong. I'll get the ruler. So that's the first cut. And that was the second cut. Yeah, the problem is this light that's on it, you'll probably see in the video, 
it's a very grey light. They put it on the back, and no, there's no way to move it. There's physically no way to put it towards the front. So wherever you move it, you're going to have a shadow pointing towards you. It's awkward enough trying to be on the side so I can get you guys to see it in the video. It's also a good safe practice to keep it on the side anyway. But having that shadow, and I was trying to adjust it, but having that shadow just made judging these lines really hard. So I thought, bugger it. Start piece number two. I actually set up just because I'm just going to do this quickly. I set up the guide, so it will just slide in, and then the blade snapped. Got one cut in, went to do another cut, bang. So yeah, I decided just to mark it out quickly, just get those outer cuts done, and I'll just go through and repunch it, remark it for the inner stuff, start drilling out. But um, I could hand saw this, it'll take forever and a day, and I'm really would just rather just use the bandsaw to be honest, just quickly get those cuts done and dusted. But they ain't happening. So I'm just gonna have to have a think about how I wanna proceed. That's okay. As Adam Savage most uh, famously said, failure is always an option. And today I very spec spectacularly failed, which is a shame, because if I can't find my spare bandsaw blade, this is going to have to be done the harder way. Well, the less convenient way. Ah, uh, well, I'll see what I can do. If I, if I can fix this all up and get it all running, I'll continue on. Otherwise, I'll leave it for tomorrow. <sighs> Don't forget to like, share, share and subscribe. <laughs> oh boy.